friends. Welcome. Thank you for coming to my stream today. I figured it'd been a, a while since I uh, recorded a lot of content with Modern Jund. So I'm going to start by playing this through League and I'm going to make it a video for uh, CFB. So hopefully you'll enjoy that whether uh, you're watching live or later, later on on YouTube. Uh, since this is a video, the first thing I want to do is... Anybody know? Anybody know the first thing I want to do? Shout out to my two excellent sponsors. Of course, uh, the first is ChannelFireball.com. Thanks for making this all possible with uh, Team CFB Ultimate Guard. Um, Channel Fireball has uh, a lot going on with the new CFB Marketplace. So if you're not tuned into that, I recommend... Um, you know, just stopping over to the website or reading their announcement. They have a new way of uh, contacting buyers and sellers for uh, magic related products and singles. Um, we're also doing this cool project called Box Breaks, which is a way to kind of get the experience or the shared experience of opening booster packs. Uh, the way it works or the way it worked when I did my box breaks, I signed up for a category of cards. Mine was blue cards opened in the call time booster packs. Then they open it live on stream and they send you the non-common cards that fit with your category. They're even doing, you know, unusual stuff like box breaks of like uh, vintage product, you know, legends, revised, stuff like that. So if you're interested, uh, look into that. And if you do decide to participate in a box break or sign up uh, for the CFB marketplace or do any business with Channel Fireball, Please do remember my affiliate code READ, R-E-I-D. Thanks also to Ultimate Guard. I'm going to put a link um, in the chat of my stream. Um, there's also links in the panels below the stream. Uh, but yeah, check out Ultimate Guard's online cata uh, catalog. I've used their products for years. Everything is super high quality and great. Thanks to Ultimate Guard. Okay, so uh, Modern Jund... You know, this deck is slow to change. A lot of the core cards have been here for, for many, many years. It's mostly just about playing with the flexible slots and metagating for what you expect to face. Um, I've decided that I, I, I wanted to go a little extra heavy on my Graveyard Hate for uh, for this particular league. Four Nile Spellbomb, two Ashiok. So I guess that's where, uh, you know, some of my flex slots are going. But in general, a lot of the stuff you see on your screen uh, probably won't surprise you. So what do you say we get to it? Need a way to re-spark the excitement in your TCG collection? Box Breaks are the way to get your hands on cards from the games you love. Learn more today at cfbboxbreaks.com or check out CFB Box Breaks on YouTube. A uh, great question from Ride or Die. Is Scavenging Ooze playable in Modern anymore? So it's basically like... Scavenging Ooze and Kroxa are at odds because... Croxa, you have to have black, black, red, red. You really don't want to fetch basic forest. And then scavenging use kind of demands the opposite of, of you, that you're making all of your non-essential fetch lands go for green to power up the ooze. So I think it's just kind of like two two different directions you can take uh, for the deck, either the, the, the heavier green or the heavier red and black. Um, the heavier red and black also makes stuff like Season Pyromancer a little more convenient, so there's there's that to think about as well. Uh, Metellias in the chat says maybe you need more Heliod hate. Uh, I, I do agree. I think Heliod Ballista will be a bad matchup for the list that I'm bringing. And in fact, the last, cut that I, the last card that I cut from my sideboard in order to add Nile Spellbomb, was Rampaging Ferocidon. So uh, I guess you could say I'm, I'm just taking my chances with that matchup. Have I tried Cleansing Wildfire as a sideboard card, maybe over Pillage? It's a good idea. I would do that if I thought that Tron was relatively very popular and Primeval Titan was relatively not as popular. But I think you just want the plain, simple, no questions asked uh, land destruction if you're facing Titan. When I say I'm playing through a modern league, that's just a five round pickup event on Magic Online. It's not anything special, it's just the, the common way to play Magic Online. 
Just playing for fun and a few digital booster packs. Okay, Red White Prowess. I wrote a lot about this deck um, last month. You can check that out. And it looks like I'll be taking away the Swift Spear. If they don't find another creature, that it'll take them a while to, uh, you know, set up their, their damage output. Now, importantly, my opponent did not reveal a companion. So I would normally expect this deck to play Luris. Not having a companion could mean probably Bedlam Reveler is the most likely. But what else? Blood Moon... Season Pyromancer, Bone Crusher Giant. Okay, well, I usually just play red and six on turn two, but I think this is a particular matchup and situation where I maybe just want to play out the, the four or five goif. It's like really, really punishing and hard for a bird deck to kill in game one. Chandra's Incinerator could be Chandra's Incinerator. I'd more expect that in a plain burn deck and slightly less in a prowess deck. Okay, so the Mutagenic Growth on the board makes the Swift Spear into a 4-5. So you go Mutagenic Growth, Lava Dart, Me. Then you kill the Goyf. If I don't block... That same play results in 6 damage to me. Either way, I'm going to play Liliana and Minus to kill the Swift Spear. You know what? I think I'm just going to block because I have Kolagon's Command. I think my position is really strong in this game, so I'd rather just not... Uh, you know, take a big chunk of damage. So here, if they just have to, like, flashback Lava Dart or spend a burn spell killing Lily, it's pretty good for me. Swift Spear is definitely the best card they, they could have to kill off Liliana. But again, I think I'm, I'm still in fine shape. That's even a real good draw. Um, yeah, let's do it. I think basically anything I hit here is, is helpful. Yep, Fatal Push. I'll take it. So I think I like Colgon's command, command to pick up the Tarmogoyf. And the question would be, what's the other mode? I can either shock the Light Scribe, make my opponent discard. I 
I guess I could also shock the light scribe with the possibility of using Ren and Six for a third damage, but I think I, I think I very likely want to play the Goyf this turn. Hmm. Okay, I pick up Goyf, I deal 2 damage to your Light Scribe. Remember there's a Lava Dart in the Graveyard, so this is not actually going to kill the creature, but it will just, you know, make my opponent do something they don't want to do. Bolt the Blood Braid, sure. I could have attacked with Blood Braid maybe before making this play, but I... I guess I wasn't sure if I was going to want it as a blocker. That's pretty nice. Um, feels like it's hard to mess this one up. So I could use Ren to get a fetch land and then play the Goyf as well. But that's basically just dealing myself three damage for like no relevant impact on the on the game or the battlefield. So I figured I'd just keep the, the Ren in hand for next turn. Plague Engineer can kill a clever Lumamancer. Is that good enough? Maybe something like this. Could also see not having the full four blood breeds, like drawing two blood breeds could be a way for me to have a clunky draw. Okay, Luris after sideboarding. So what do I make of that? Like possible misclick in game one, or they had Bedlam Reveler, they boarded it out, or I don't know, maybe they had maybe they have Luris in their main deck and boarded it out, but at, at any rate, it's a little bit unusual. This is the type of hand I would be happy to have on the play. But on the draw, they kept seven cards. They play a turn one creature. You know, what's the plan here? I mean, I guess the question is, am I just mulliganing any hand that doesn't have one of my ten one mana spells? That's four bolts, four inquisitions, two fatal push. Like, they go Swift Spear Attack, I go play a Tapped Land, then they go, you know, another creature. I play a Goyf, it gets bolted, they attack me, then Liliana can't even stabilize the situation. So you can see that this is losing to their best draws, for sure, if I don't have a one-mana play. Even having, like, Terminate or Abrupt Decay would be better than having Goyf and Ren. Hand would just be awesome on the play, because 
you know, the Ren and Six and the Liliana would be more likely to kill their creatures. Hmm. Pretty close. Definitely doesn't look like a hand that you should mulligan, just looking at it on paper. But I think I might need to do better when I'm on the draw against a, an opponent who's already kept seven. I'm gonna try mulliganing. Okay, and this this is in fact better. Uh Could bottom, well, I think it's Goyf, Pyromancer, or Land. One thing about the Pyromancer is it's a little bit awkward on the mana. Like, I'd have to shock myself with a probably a Blood Crypt here. If I keep the Goyf, then I can go, like, Overgrown Tomb, then Swamp Goyf, or sorry, Swamp Abrupt Decay, then Goyf Ravine. Alright, I'll bottom Pyromancer. Definitely could regret that if I flood out, but... I have tried Bone Crusher Giant in Jund. I think it's um, fine, just usually like you're spending two mana on a, a job that you want to spend one mana on with Bone Crusher Giant. But it is it is a, definitely a solid card. I also could have put back Ravine, but then it's like, now I'm, you know, two red sources away from casting a Pyromancer anyway. My thought is that I'd rather just develop well, and then hopefully the top of my library delivers, you know, by the time we get to, like, turn four and five. In a heavy burn metagame, what sideboard cards would you consider? Well, I think Collective Brutality is, like, you know, really solid. Because it's great against burn and red prowess and has applications elsewhere. Um, Weather the Storm is super impactful against specifically burn. And then Huntmaster of the Fells or Kitchen Finks, stuff like that is, like, you know, versatile cards that... that, that you would definitely be happy to have if you faced these matchups. Obstinate Bailoth. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I'm going to push the Swift Spear end of turn. The Swift Spear, because my opponent's going to clearly want to cast these creatures next turn, so the Lumomancer is probably not going to be too threatening for a little while. I can eventually answer the Lumomancer. But I think the way that I want to sequence this is like goif this turn, then next turn I decay the light scribe and play ravine. Then the following turn I can go like Inquisition, you know, red and six. Is Kitchen Finks good? Um, I mean, Kitchen Finks is a little bit like quote unquote outdated for modern, but it is really good against people who are trying to attack you on the ground with small creatures it's still one of the best things you can have we already talked about the the green mana issue with scavenging ooze and the way uh some of my card choices kind of skew me away from green more towards red and black but 
you know, Kitchen Finks is still one of the best things at, at, at doing that particular job. All right, well, I'm going to take this path to exile. And I think I want to abrupt decay the light scribe. I think that card is just a little too scary. So I think I block the Lumomancer here, and then they have to bolt the Goyf itself. If I block nothing, I take 12 damage, which is just too much, especially against the Shrine of Burning Rage. Well, this is where I'd be loving the Seasoned Pyromancer, but I did use all of the other cards that I kept in my opening hand uh, to pretty good effect. I guess the possible, like the, the way this would have worked out the best, given my draws, is if I had bottomed Raging Ravine and kept the Pyromancer. Elder Gargaroth too expensive for the sideboard. Mm, borderline. I've sometimes played like one five mana spell in the sideboard of my my Jun deck, but that's it's that's where you're you're starting to push your luck. I think my best draw here is Kolagon's Command. Bloodbreed, of course, is always strong. But I, I, pro I kind of have to kill the Shrine of Burning Rage if I want to stay in the game. Yeah, I'm 
just just dead. Basically dead on board here. Well, if my opponent bricked, I get an extra draw step now. I mean, I'm just dead to the Shrine of Burning Rage at any time my opponent decides to activate it, but I guess I'll make them activate it. Dingre, thank you very much for your continued support. 25 months means you've been here almost since the beginning. All right, this hand is acceptable on the play, even though it's unexciting.
Just going to terminate this right away. I kind of feel like my opponent doesn't have Boros Charm, but I could give them the option to uh, Boros Charm for Indestructible if I, if I waited. Um, I agree it would not be crazy to have Maelstrom Pulse in my deck after sideboarding. I just think I want, uh, you know, more cheap spells. And then I, I, I do have uh, already Abrupt Decay and two Kologons commands to kill Shrine of Burning Rage. Wow. Okay, my opponents had really good draws in these sideboarded games. And they're lining up well. So this says exile each opponent's graveyard, um, which that would actually not shrink the goifs. Look, lean in light scribe and a full hand of cards is terrifying, but at least I have a reasonable defense with the two, four, five goifs. But like a lava dart or you know a manamorphos turn just makes these creatures so so enormous Feel like this is the only reasonable block. Uh, I am just dead to Lava Dart, right? Like, Lava Dart will, would deal two damage to me, and it would give Monastery Swift Spear plus four plus four. But, like, you know, what what am I going to do if that's the case? I could block the Swift Spear. Then they go Lava Dart me. Kill the Goy for free. I take five. Then. It's like pretty hard for me to even draw out of the situation. I think I just have to hope they don't have it. That puts me to one as far as I can tell. All right, game on. Is this going to be on YouTube? I hope so. That's that's the objective.
Okay, okay. So I still can't actually get Croak's uh, escaped this turn. Which means I think I want to start by cracking the peatland. Uh, I can deal 12 damage to my opponent. 13 damage to my opponent. I can get them to 3. Uh, but I'd rather gain the two life, I think. Right, they're going to have three or four draws to find Lightning Bolt here. But I'm now out of range of Lava Dart or a two damage burn spell. I have Bolt to take care of a haste creature. Yikes. Wow. Love it. The one life comeback. Dodging bullets. And uh, for the record, the reason my opponent conceded, presumably, is that they had a land in hand. So I was going to attack for five, put them to three, and then escape Kroxa and they'd be dead. Really good opening hand. I, I enjoy playing those matchups against the red decks, by the way. I, I happily pl play John and get paired against Monastery Swift Spears every round. Urza's Tower, however, is not my favorite to get paired against. Interesting. Well, I'm definitely taking either the map or the scrying.
So if my opponent has a land in their top two, they're going to go a Sphere for green, Sylvan Scrying, and then, you know, presumably set up Tron pretty quickly and conveniently. If they don't have a land in the top two, then they're going to do that and then play the map and then potentially not have green mana later. So it's kind of like taking the map could give me the highest... Like, it's like the best if things go really well for me slash really badly for the opponent. But I think I should just take Sylvan Scrying. Especially the texture of my hand. It's like... If my opponent makes Tron on turn four and they just have Karn, like, you know, it's not great, but I'm still playing that game. I can kill the Karn and then take it from there. I don't know. I'm going to take the Scrying. All right, so they actually did brick on land. Played the map. Can I explain the split of Pillage and Molten Rain? Um, often when two cards are close in power level and function, I like to split the difference because that improves your ability to line up the best tool for the best job. In other words, I'd usually rather draw one each of Molten Rain and Pillage compared to drawing two of either one. Um, having some number of Pillages is nice to round out your number of answers to like chalice and snaring bridge you know troublesome artifacts but then if you're actually just destroying a land molten rain is slightly better for that job What do I think of the Grixis slash Sultai Luris control decks in modern? Um, I have seen the Sultai deck in action. It looked really good and appealing to me. Uh, I mean, I think Luris is just awesome. It's it's good modern deck building to, to focus on having mostly cheap spells anyway. And then Luris generates a ton of value as a companion. So I would say I'm, I'm interested in, in any kind of Luris deck. All right, well, that's one way to beat Tron. Winning game one is like a really good feeling because I, I actually get some good weapons after sideboarding.
sometimes trim one Ren and six, like drawing multiple Ren and six pretty bad, but drawing one helps you get to three mana on curve and, you know, casting these three mana cards on curve is that's, that's kind of how I win the matchup. Ever thought of giving BCG a try in Jund? Can you refresh my memory what's BCG? Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, we talked about that a moment ago. Uh, I have tried it before. I think it's a fine card. What about Decay? Um, I leave in the Decay because sometimes you can tag like an Expedition map or an Oblivion Stone or something that they grabbed with Karn the Great Creator. Um, it's it's not one of your best cards, but it at least does something. <laughs> look, look at this hand. All right. I mean, on the play, there would be some upside here, but like... I have the two fail cases of A, my opponent just assembling Tron on turn three, and B, me not drawing a third land. Plus it's like, you know, nothing, nothing pillage. That might be okay, but it's not super ideal. I'm, I'm going to mulligan this. Okay, so this I'm going to keep. I feel like I'm definitely keeping two lands and Inquisition. I guess on the draw, it's somewhat unlikely for the second Inquisition to actually hit something. It's not impossible, but if you figure like in their first two turns and my first two turns we're going to strip away four cards that cost one or two mana um you know tron does have a lot of lands and a lot of expensive spells so they it might be might be the case that by turn two i just want to cast goif instead of inquisition anyway um but i could also definitely bottom like the lily because I think I want to generally play Ashiok first and then turn four lilies. Like, sometimes not that effective. Okay, let's do that. Also, I could miss my land drop. That is that is something that could happen. Okay, so my opponent has turn three Tron. I guess I'll take Chromatic Star and just maybe they won't find anything for a little while. Won't find any action.
all is dust. Interesting. So now I know that I don't necessarily want to play out the Ashiok just yet. Taking away Oblivion Stone is helpful. I think Assassin's Trophy is a fine card. I sometimes play with it. Okay, so going for the All is Dust here leaves my opponent with Sylvan Scrying and Urza's Tower in hand, plus the Chromatic Star can, you know, basically gives them two draw steps for next turn. Interesting. I think, given the situation, that I want to play Ashiok first. Uh, almost certainly, right? Because if I pillage a Tron land, they just scrying to replace it, and I'm, you know, I'm not really getting anywhere in the long run. So I'm definitely playing Ashiok, and then what should I actually do with it? Um, normally, people would like to, you know, like to mill themselves to hit Kroxa. But I actually have two Ashioks, so like, you know, I could mill 40 cards, win the game in, in, you know, eight or nine turns. It's not crazy. Exiling the opponent's graveyard is bad if I draw another Goyf. I think I'm going to mill, mill you. I can always change back to milling myself if, like, we're getting to a point where I, I, I need a play to make. But I have my next, at least my next turns play lined up, so I don't feel like I need to dig for the Kroxa until further notice. Yeah, it's also possible to, like, just mill all four copies of a, you know, mill three copies plus pillage a Tron land. Okay. The best laid plans are just pretty useless when the opponent finds Ugin. I have one Maelstrom Pulse that I could find. Okay, so now I think I pillage the power plant and just hopefully I find an answer to Ugin.
how can I win this game? Well, one way would be to draw Maelstrom Pulse or Bloodbraid Elf and then just outdraw my opponent in the long run. But certainly I'm I'm losing. I mean I'm gonna lose I'm gonna lose the game if Ugin stays on the battlefield. Okay, finding the Karn, I think, is enough for me to concede this one. I, mean, I guess I technically could have drawn Bloodbraid into, into Pulse still. Alright, so having seen a couple of Thrag Tusks, does that change anything about the way I want to sideboard? Oh, sometimes I even terminate to fight Worm Coil Engine, but I think Lightning Bolt's probably generally a little better. I could see trimming like one season Pyro, but I think in general I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I have here. Uh, great question from Kung, Kung Fu in the chat. Out of curiosity, why do you play two Overgrown Tomb instead of Blood Crypt? when you don't have any double green spells and you talk about needing more red and black mana. So strangely, Overgrown Tomb is actually better than Blood Crypt when you want to cast like Kroxa and, uh, you know, things like that. Because what you really want to avoid is having to search for a basic forest. So in other words, I'd rather have Overgrown Tomb and Mountain as compared to Blood Crypt and Forest. Because Basic Forest is like the worst card for, for casting my spells. Um, I do think it's still close between having second Blood Crypt or having second Overgrown Tomb. But I've been like, you know, still relatively happy with, with that mana base. Yeah, I think Dark Confidant still has value. It's it's certainly good in a matchup like this. Like any any most non-red decks, Dark Confidant's pretty strong against. Uh, Savo MTG says I should keep four lightning bolts. Yeah, I could see keeping one or two more lightning bolts, maybe over Season Pyromancer or like third copy of Renin Six. Is it reasonable to have Dark Confidant as a sideboard card for certain matchups? Mm, it's reasonable. I think if you wanted access to Dark Confidant, it'd be more likely to go in your main deck in a small number of copies. 
And then you could just board it out against red decks. But, I mean, it, it's a nice card to have access to. I think we agree on that. Uh, Lucia, thank you very much for subscribing. Okay, so we have Urza's Tower, Blast Zone, Double Ancient Stirrings, Relic, Chromatic Sphere. If I take the Chromatic Sphere, it can delay the casting of these stirrings, and then maybe that gives time for uh, Liliana to do her thing. I think that's that's the best take here. Relic is a little bit annoying since I do have turn two Goyf, but um, it's it's you you never want to try to race Tron, so like trying to focus on getting a 3-4 Goyf on turn 2. That's just not really where I want to be. I, I more want to slow them down and attack their resources. Okay, definitely pleased to have drawn a third land for Lily. So Urza's Power Plant is one of the two cards they've drawn so far. talking about wasteland being in modern horizons too i think that's a situation of be careful what you wish for i think modern players you know glorify the idea of wasteland for beating tron and stuff but i think you know when you actually have to play a lot of games with that card it, it causes no no shortage of bad feelings in itself um i think you know wasteland is one of the things that distinguishes modern and legacy and I, I don't necessarily know if you want to like eliminate that that line between the two formats uh, also for what it's worth Ren and Six had to be banned in legacy because of its pairing with Wasteland so there's no way that you could have the pairing of Ren and Six and, and Wasteland in Modern. Like, those two cards can't exist together. Okay, so currently my opponent has Blast Zone, Double Ancient Stirrings, one unknown card. Plus the Relic is kind of a card in the, in the bank here. Um, that makes it relatively unlikely for them to have Tron plus Threat next turn. Um, but anything is any, anything's still possible. Hello, Yellow Hat. Welcome to all Yellow Hat Raiders. I'm currently playing Modern Jund. Surprise, surprise. I'm 1-0 in my league. I'm in game three of match two against Tron, and it's very close. 
What was Gab up to on stream today? Playing some historic, was it? Jess guy, how'd it go? Won it all. You won every match with Jess guy? Okay, so to recap, tuning back into this game, my opponent has four cards. Blast Zone, Stirring, Stirrings. And now I'm deciding whether to play Liliana or Ashiok. I actually think against this configuration of cards, I want to get the Lily going first because they're more likely to find the Tron piece without having to search. Um, but if I can give them a smaller amount of time to do that by pressuring their, their resources with Lily, then, uh, you know, maybe they'll have to discard some of these stirrings, something like that. So I think it's going to be Lily, discard a blood breed, and then, you know, if I don't hit a land, maybe I'm playing Ashiok next turn. I think I can just grab Mountain here. I think normally, like, if you just showed me the battlefield, but not, but I knew nothing about my opponent's hand, I think I would normally play Ashiok there. But that's because my opponent could be holding Sylvan Scrying or uh, Expedition Map. Instead, I know they're holding Ancient Stirrings, which uh, Ashiok doesn't do much against. Uh, Henny Bin says, if you start milling them with Ashiok, could that put uh, a fat... Wait, uh, maybe I'm not sure what you're asking. You're asking about milling myself to pump Goyf? Or are you asking about actually de winning the game by depleting their library? Um, okay, I guess I may, may have missed sequence there. Like, normally you want to plus the Lily, like, as the first thing you do in, in your turn so that your opponent has the least amount of information to work with. But maybe in this case, because Astriok exiles the graveyard and I have Tarmogoyf, maybe I should have done it slightly differently. Uh, in either case, I think I should now Astriok and mill myself.
Yeah, so I did wind up missing one damage there. If I had played the Ashiok, milled myself first, and then plus the Lily. But, you know, maybe my opponent would have... Maybe they're holding a, some kind of search card, and maybe they, they would have discarded that and kept the Ancient Stirrings. Who knows? Okay, Tron is assembled. Wow, that's an unexpectedly good turn. Saucy Uncle writes, what do you think of Liliana Last Hope in mid-range decks that can't run Ren and Six, like Black White Stoneblade? Well, I really liked how you phrased that question because the reason I no longer play Liliana the Last Hope in, in Jund is, you know, Ren and Six is cheaper and also and just as good at managing one toughness creatures. But I think if you were playing a deck that didn't have Ren and Six, Liliana could be a really good addition. So good good thought. All right, I mean, I think I have to deploy the Bloodbraid Elf, even though I'm probably losing my board to Oblivion Stone next turn. Maybe I can hit a Land Destruction spell or a Thoughtseize. Yes, I hit Inquisition, so that allows me to maybe take away the Oblivion Stone. Hopefully I don't stare down an Ugin. Forest and Karn. So that's neither the best nor the worst thing that I could see there. Don't want to do anything with Ashiok right now. Well... Okay, I'm gonna plus the Lily, which is gonna make them discard Forest. I'm gonna kill this Karn. I guess I wanna Ashiok myself. Ashiok myself, then plus Lily. Then attack and kill the Planeswalker. Okay, and please do not draw Ugin. It's the one thing that I ask, do not draw Ugin. Why did I ask Yacht before combat? The biggest reason is that I was killing the Planeswalker 
So if I ask Yok after combat, the Planeswalker is going to be gone. As it turned out, I milled both an instant and a Planeswalker, so I ended up actually pumping the Goyf compared to what it was uh, before using Ashiok. All right, I'm still looking for Kroxa. And there he is. Oh, so sad. I have one Bloodbraid Elf left. Nope, I have zero Bloodbraid Elf left. I do have Maelstrom Pulse. Kolagon's Command. So if my opponent bricks, they Lightning Bolt me, I end of turn make tokens with Season Pyromancer, untack. Untap, attack with Raging Ravine. I guess if both players just draw lands, I actually am winning this game. Like, the Raging Ravine could just win in two turns. That's, that's a possible thing that could happen. Alright, I guess I just pass. Why, why would you advocate conceding? Like, either I'll be dead in two turns, 
and it's over quickly anyway. But I just don't don't see why the con, con, the right click concede is a, a, a viable or appealing option here. I could still draw Maelstrom Pulse. Well, how many times how many times do you think you've conceded because you couldn't think of an out when there actually was some turn of events or mistake your opponent could have made or a series of top decks where you actually could have won the game? Like how many how many times do you think you've conceded when you actually had, you know, a one in a thousand chance of winning? I'll say that I've won plenty of games where I thought there was nothing that could happen where I could win. Like my opponent made a weird choice, or I drew a card that I wasn't thinking of, or instead of thinking about it out, it ended up being Bloodbraid Elf into that out, you know. Things happen. Sorry, you guys can't see the Ugin on the screen. Uh, it's at It was at 11 counters, and I Colgan's commanded it down to 9. So now we are actually on uh, Maelstrom Pulse or, or Dead. And we choose Dead. All right, match number three. I guess the move is keep and hope I'm playing against a creature deck. Wow, my opponent immediately mulligan to five. It's like less than less than two seconds and they're down to five cards, now four. Hey, what's up, Chris? Wow, I've... I'm, su I'm surprised to see such a flurry of questions all centering on Bone Crusher Giant. Um, but yeah, I've tried Bone Crusher Giant before. I think it's a decent card, and uh, maybe you, with so many people seemingly interested in it, I'll, I'll try it again sometime. City of Brass, that means, I think, Ad Nauseam, sometimes Dredge. My hand's actually pretty bad against both of those <laughs> decks, so despite my opponent mulling to four, I would not count them out too quickly. All right, City of Brass, Multifor City of Brass concede. Um, I guess I'll bring in some Graveyard Hate. Man, who knows?
At any rate, multiforcity of brass does not seem like a creature strategy, right? So if I, I can probably cut like Fatal Push and Terminate pretty easily. All right, I, I'm thinking I'll do this as like a hedge. Maybe I want Collective Brutality. Do this as a hedge. And then if I confirm that they're dredge for game three, then I'll swap out the other two lilies for two bolts. Well, this hand's pretty good against a wide range of strategies. The Great Reveal. Boy, I'm at a loss. Just a brew, I guess. Just a good old fashioned brew. Yeah, like abs and blink, perhaps. Oh, it could be Soul Flayer, maybe? I don't know. No, maybe not. This is part of the reason I love Liliana. It's like, you thought he's on turn one, see some reactive cards and removal spells, and then you can just win the game by never playing a creature and just working them over with, with the Planeswalker. Cyrus, thank you for the sub, 17 months. Very, very much appreciated.
Dubious Challenge. Look at the top 10 cards of your library. Exile up to two creature cards from among them, then shuffle. Target opponent may choose one of the exiled cards and put it on the battlefield under their control. Put the rest onto the battlefield under your control. Land, untapped land is lethal here. All right, I dealt 20 damage without ever playing a creature. That's pretty nice. What did we lose to in this league? Take a wild guess. It was, in fact, Urzatron. For my... Well, in my notes in my notes page that I have open, I have 92 Jund leagues listed, and I wonder how many of them I've lost to Urzatron only. 4-1, losing to Urzatron. 3-2, losing to Urzatron twice. 3-2, losing to Urzatron and Amulet Titan. Ooh, that's a good hand. That is a good hand. Alright, so... I guess I want to go Overgrown Tomb, Inquisition, and then Mountain Wren. The only way I would want to do it the other way is if I think this is a Blood Moon deck, but we really don't have enough information to conclude that yet. Savor the moment. Alright, so this is a, like a polymorph deck. Their objective is to play Dwarven Mind, make a 1 1, then Indomitable Creativity. Excuse me. Uh, I think. Let's see. If I take Ren. Maybe I, maybe I just have to give them the Ren and then Abrupt Decay it. I'll take the Indomitable Creativity. I mean, I may be able to beat Indomitable Creativity 
if they get Embercool and then I just Liliana Edict them. Oh, they're going to get Velomachus Lorehold. Got it. All right, I'll take Indominal cre Creativity. Uh, Sleepy Milo, thank you very much for gifting that sub above and beyond the Call of Duty. So one thing I could do is I could play my own Ren because they're going to want to hold up Remand next turn. So it's like instead of going Abrupt Decay and then get my spell Remanded and try to cast something again on turn 4, I could play my Ren and then Abrupt Decay to cut through the Cut through the remand. How do I feel about savor the moment? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna abrupt decay. Sure. How can I destroy Jace? I can either Maelstrom Pulse it or I can deal 5 damage to it. for me.
Huh. Wonder if Plague Engineer on Dwarf is effective in this matchup. We know that my opponent can't have Snapcaster Mage because that would interrupt the Indomitable Creativity combo. I feel like these are the cards that I definitely want in my deck. And then... Gotta have some threats. that like that I guess bolt can't be that bad if they have Jace and it can interrupt the combo all right let's try that I think it's too dangerous to let them have Ren when I don't know if I'm going to find a forest for Abrupt Decay right away. Yep.
They definitely have at least Rogrin Triome. I, I would guess they have uh, one Sacred Foundry as well. All right, pretty anticlimactic game two there. Incoming Tron round five. Bring it on. I'll play against Tron. against Donald Trump. I heard that he had his account suspended from uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Magic Online. That's just what I heard, though. All right. Bottom the second Lily or fetch land. I mean, if everything goes well with the Renin six, I won't really have any mana problems. So I guess I'll, I'll get a little greedy in bottom Verdant Catacombs. Ifeno, thank you very much for the sub. Suspend Greater Gargadon. Top, top. If you're looking forward to some sealed deck on stream, this is my last match of the Modern League. Yikes. That's not a very restore balancey card, is it? I guess you never know. But uh, 
I guess I put myself between a rock and a hard place with the basic forest. On the one hand, I'm, you know, pillage, like, they could have Blood Moon easily, which was part of my thought, getting the basic forest, but now I can't cast Kroxa, but I suppose that's not the worst thing to ever happen. Choose three cards in your hand, discard the rest. This thing has four counters. Probably keep both lilies. I don't know, maybe Lily, Lily, Croaks, huh? Man, we really got the Royal Sampler in this league. Dubious Challenge, Polymorph, Restore Balance. I guess Red, Red White Prowess and Tron are a little more normal, but at least it's uh, five very different archetypes. If it really matters what I take here. I think I'm going to take the second Gargadon. What am I going to do against Greater Gargadon? I'm going to take 9 damage, and then I'm going to make my opponent sacrifice it with Liliana. I could Emblem Ren and Six. I don't think this is quite the time to do it because it's not that helpful to have the Emblem when I don't have a lot of lands in my hand.
flame slash. So as foretold with three counters means once per turn they can play a spell that costs three or less for free. Conscript writes, is there a different mindset for a player that has uh, that a player has to have coming into modern from historic and standard? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm actually in the process of writing a deep dive article on that exact topic. Like right before I came live, 10 minutes before I came live, I was writing that article. Um, the short answer is that modern is a lot faster and more focused on efficiency. But yeah, check out the, the deep dive, hopefully coming coming live on Channel Fireball like next week or so. What gives the Gargadon haste? It's just a special rule of suspend. When something comes, when a creature comes off suspend, it has haste. Actual collected conjuring. I'm defeated. All right, so these come in. Guess these come in. Nah, the land destruction stinks. Could play lightning bolt to speed up the clock or fatal push to kill a rhino token. I guess just a couple lightning bolts. Pretty crummy though.
mulligan to five. Blood Moon, you say? All right, you can have a Blood Moon. I'm going to take your sleight of hand. So because of that Blood Moon, I think I need to just leave these fetch lands uncracked. I don't really want to, um, like, walk my Seasoned Pyromancer into... Sorry, I don't want to fetch Red to set up for the Seasoned Pyromancer and then get locked out of the game by a Blood Moon. I'd rather that happen in the reverse order. Is it a little bit greedy to, to not take the Blood Moon? I actually, I would put it the opposite way. Like, I think it's... I think it's... Um, leaving them with the Blood Moon is kind of the opposite of greedy because I'm saying, like, that's a card that I can work around. It just... I just have to slow myself down a tiny bit. But, you know, right now you can see that I fetched the right lands and I'm pretty well insulated against the Blood Moon and particularly against an opponent who mulliganed to five. I'm happy to just take that slow approach and uh, take away their resources, reduce their chances of uh, assembling their combo. Collected Conjuring incoming next turn. Feel like that could go very badly for me. Okay. Ancestral Vision Slate of Hand could be worse. It would have been worse, I think, if they had hit Restore Balance or Crashing Footfalls, but still a definite 
restock here. Take away the Collected Conjuring, leave them with all mountains, basically. Keep in mind, I mean, they could just, I guess they're not going to beat me with the Gargadon because I have Terminate. Dragon, thanks for the sub. And Swiggy, thank you also. Now we get to see the Ren and Six emblem. Or not. Okay. One top, one bottom.
uh, chat is asking for a budget alternative to Season Pyromancer. Um, yeah, there's tons of alternatives. Dark Confidant, Tireless Tracker, Kolagon's Command. Lily on a Last Hope, Croaks, uh... Clothis. And uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to mention those as as necessarily budget alternatives, just as alternatives. Period. If you you know if you have a access to those cards, you can use any of them. Having seen my opponent's sideboard plan, am I changing anything? No. Well, hard to ask for better than this. The question is, what am I putting on the bottom? Let's say I'm definitely keeping these four cards on the left. Second Inquisition. Yeah, could have could have done Croxa. I like keeping Liliana. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think Inquisition or Croxa were the the two best options there. And this is kind of the reason I was thinking the second Inquisition wouldn't be that helpful is like, again, I talked about this in a previous matchup, but when I'm on the draw, by the time my opponent has two turns and I've already Inquisitioned one of their cards, you know, are they going to have more Inquisition targets by that point? Have four inquisitions and two thoughtsies.
I think any number of croxes between zero and three or four can can all be reasonable choices. Um, okay, why did I play Kroxa on turn two? I played Kroxa on turn two because, number one, my opponent had a low number of cards in hand with a four mana spell. So if you play a, a card that pressures their resources, sometimes you can kind of put them to a tough test that early on in the game. Like, do I keep my action card or do I keep my land not knowing what's going to come off the top? And then uh, even more important than that, I was hoping to curve into Liliana. In which case, like, you just clean them out, you know. Again, my opponent's trying to get up to four mana to play Collective Conjuring, and if I make them a discard a card every single turn of the game, they can't do that. Um, but, of course, it has worked out as badly as possible with me not drawing the third land and my opponent playing Blood Moon. I did keep in Maelstrom Pulse, but I can't cast it because I don't have green mana. Alright, well that's all I've got for Modern Jund for today. Hope you enjoyed it.